Today is the last episode of year two of Talking March Madness. Avery, UConn, we expected it. They deliver for the first time since 06, 07 for the Gators. They go back to back. Congratulations on UConn. I fear that it was going to be a, a double digit victory, even though I predicted them winning by four. But um, when Purdue went four to five minutes without a field goal in the second half, I said that was that that was going to be the beginning of the end right there. You can't go through a stretch like that against UConn. They're too good. You're absolutely right, Miguel. Congratulations to the UConn men's basketball team, back-to-back -back college national championships. They did a very good job. They were uh, very consistent in their tournament play. They showed that they wanted it very badly as far as wanting to have this championship. But I also want to congratulate Purdue. Purdue last year did not make it out of the first round. This year, they made it all the way to the finals. Not only that, before their final four game, they find out Zach Eady is a is their uh, player of the year. So not only do you have that, you have a back-to-back -back player of the year. Your team is going to the national championship. They had a lot of expectations this year for Purdue. And I think they exceeded those expectations. Would they have wanted a national championship? Absolutely. Granted, the store doesn't reflect that, but you know, when you have a team like the Huskies that have just been so consistent from their conference tournament all the way into the uh, national championship tournament, who 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 doesn't who doesn't see the Yukons, you know, trying to repeat? But Purdue had a chance. Um, you know, other teams also had a chance. But UConn and Coach Don uh, Dan Hurley, they did a fantastic job. Congratulations to these young men. But also, a round of applause to the Purdue Boilermakers. They did they did a very they did a very good job this tournament. Uh, considering you know they people were looking at them for what happened last year but also tip the hat off for Purdue as well and speaking of Dan Hurley um there is a possibility he could be going elsewhere and you already have some people saying like don't go Dan don't go um I mean it's hard to walk away from a program going back to back have a chance to do 3P something that is very difficult to do um but there's some rumblings out there saying that Dan Hurley could be going somewhere else and Kentucky could be one of those teams on the top of that list. I've heard that and I would find it very shocking that a coach that wins back-to-back -back national championships would go elsewhere. Now, I will say this. Yes, Kentucky needs a head coach. Yes, they need someone who can bring in a bit of fire someone that can create a program, especially a very storied program that University of Kentucky basketball has been known for to solidify that. But, you know, you never can say what people are thinking, but I would say this for Coach Hurley, enjoy your moment, enjoy what you have created. And if the opportunity arises and you say, okay, I've done great, at the University of Connecticut. Maybe I can take what I've built here and take it down to Lexington. But, you know, if, if if I was a betting person, I would say no. I would say go for the brief Pete. He His core team is still gonna be there next year. I, I, only, I only think he has maybe about two players that are probably gonna go uh, uh, eligible for the draft. So he still has a very good base there for the possibility of a three-peat but you know you usually once you know a season is over everybody's already talking about you know coaching vacancies and whatnot but <clears throat> i mean if if i was a betting person i'd say coach hurley stays at uconn but it's not unprobable until can until kentucky actually makes that decision but i i think i think coach hurley is is fine where he is now 
one thing I've understood about coaching, especially coaching changes, is are you okay leaving what you've built to someone else to continue? Or do you really want to go if the possibility you need to rebuild? And Kentucky does need a rebuild. They, 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 they got smoked in the tournament. They were a three seed. I, you know, they were projected to go uh, at least elite eight, maybe final four, but they got toasted in the tournament. So it's a possibility. But like I said, if I was a betting person, I say Coach Hurley stays at UConn. But until we know for sure. If he leaves, it will be more of him wanting to prove himself all over again, um, challenge himself and take on a new, um, um, a new chapter and open up a new chapter in his life. So, but hey, this is only the beginning. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but speaking of changes, same face, new place. John Calipari is heading to Arkansas. I like this because I feel that both John and Kentucky needed a fresh start. So I like this for John. I'm always in awe of successful coaches, you know, going someplace new and try to prove themselves all over again. Um, it's a five-year deal. Um, hopefully he has some success in Arkansas. I mean, his track. look at his track record. Every team he has gone to, they have gone somewhere. Um, and like I said, yeah, for both, both sides, this needed to happen. And um, in my opinion, John Calipari, he knows how to recruit. That man knows how to recruit. Um, yes, he's a good coach, but I feel like he's even a much better recruiter. Um, I mean, just look at the players that he had on the system. Um, it's, whether it's Kentucky, Memphis, for example, Derrick Rose. Yeah, Derrick Rose. Um, in Kentucky, you had um, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns. Jamal, um, Jamal Murray, the list goes on and on and on. I think even Devin Booker was there as well. It, it's just, I mean, the man knows how to recruit players. So I have no doubt that he could um, provide the same for Arkansas. You know, if things work out the way they do, but I feel this is a good fresh start for both sides. And I, I agree with you on this, even though it was a bit of a surprise, especially Kentucky's exit in the tournament. But uh, Coach Kyle Powery going to Arkansas is, you know, seems like a very good move. Arkansas has a very decent basketball team. So you're going there with a coach that has experience and you just said uh, very good at recruiting. He's going to bring some new ideas. He's going to be bringing a fresh mindset to a team that is okay and when like a lot of these basketball teams we've seen and we like when we see these basketball teams shine if you're coming from if you're going to a school if you're going to an institution that has a very storied football program and constantly every year the football program is drawing more attention than your other sports you want to see what you can do to bring that attention to your program. So Coach Calipari going to Arkansas. Arkansas's football program is, is pretty good, it's a very storied program. So now you want to bring that excitement and that atmosphere, and you want to bring it to their, their basketball arena. And just as we're talking about, you know, basketball, if I may shift really quick for, for the women, the women's game on Sunday was absolutely brilliant. You had two of the best teams in the country going head to head for a national championship. South Carolina, they got their they got their perfect season. But when you're talking about the best player in college basketball, you know, she 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 didn't get her championship, but still is recognized as an individual who has lifted up a sport, it works both ways. It can work through coaches. It can work through players. It can work through a team aspect. And that's the joy 
when you follow a sport like college basketball, especially during March Madness. So coaching changes, you know, change is very hard. But when you see that coaches can go to a team and make a difference, recruit very well, have players stay there to say, yeah, I'm good. I want to be better because I know what my dreams are going forward, NBA, what have you, you you can get them to do that. And when you have a lot of coaches that can do that, it just makes the sport better. Now to end this final episode of Talking March Madness, next year, obviously we got to put UConn there just in case of potentially winning at all. And UConn is now 6-0 and in national title games. They're 6-0. and And this has been since 99. From 99 to now, crazy 25 years span, they are 6-0 and in the national title games. I would say a team that I could say that have a chance, and I repeat, have a chance to go far, especially because of um, the new players that will be arriving to the program, is Duke. I put Duke up there. So I feel that next season, the pressure is on Duke. You could say the same thing in North Carolina, and I agree, but I feel that Duke has a little bit more pressure coming to next season than North Carolina, in my opinion. And I'm a Tar Heel fan, so it's yeah. coming from a Tar Heel fan. I, I, I that young stud that. that that young stud that they're getting. Oh, um, all eyes on him. All eyes on him. Next yeah, season. I'll, oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I I completely agree with you because, in in fact, let's let's go ahead and put like five teams out there that you know whether uh, you want to think about improving or you want to say they want to prove themselves. Duke, absolutely. They lost in the quarterfinal ACC tournament. They got beat by the Wolfpack. They end up flying under the radar the entire tournament until until the Elite Eight. They tried to get revenge, but that does not happen. <laughs> that didn't happen. So, but they know what they know what has worked. And for a lot of people that are looking at Duke men's basketball team, you know, this is again storied program was built by coach Mike Krzyzewski, probably one of the greatest basketball, college basketball coaches ever. And they are just flying under the radar. Second, the NC State Wolfpack. Whatever they did, it worked. Whatever they did, it worked. So not only do you get to a Final Four, not only do you bring back that excitement, your women's team did it too. So you have something there that's working. So if you need to, you know, like the old saying, ain't broke. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, as a tech person, you can do some upgrades. So if you need to go to the transfer portal, if you're recruiting, but you know, you know, you need something off the bench to help you, that also works. A third team, yes, Kentucky, you know, um, excluding a new coach that they need there's something in that team also that needs to be uh, evaluated. And it's going to be just player-wise. I don't think, a, you know, the coach helps, but I think it's player-wise. Knowing how far they didn't get in the tournament is something that is weighing on them, especially those that are coming back next season. UConn, of course, they know what they do to need to win. They know that they can do it to win and if they're looking you know in the dynasty aspect a third national championship works and if coach Hurley stays okay great he stays and now we're just gonna do whatever we can we're going to follow the plan any changes to the plan we're gonna need we're gonna bust our butts you know we're not gonna listen to the noise we're gonna do our job and the fifth one that I I I kind of want to 
I want to stay on this. And this is kind of like a, a, a two-way tie if you if you want. Creighton and Gonzaga. So help me. <laughs> I need one of these. I need one of these two teams. I need one of these two teams in a national championship again. Creighton and Gonzaga have created something in the past 10 years or so that just gets me excited every time, every time I see them, whether it be conference play, whether I see them on, on ESPN, whether I, I see them when I'm checking the scores, anything of those two teams that started as Cinderella's a number of years ago have now built absolute treasures of basketball programs and I, I, I want to see I want to see more from them. And there are other teams in the tournament that, you know, had Cinderella aspects like Oakland. I hope, you know, from that tournament experience, they build a good foundation. Hopefully we can see them in the tournament many years to come. Even the ones that didn't make it in the tournament. If we could switch to the INT real quick and you had a number of schools that didn't want to go to the INT tournament. Oh, who won? Seton Hall a Big East team that did very well in, in, in the Big East tournament, but didn't get a chance to go to the big dance. So you go to INT, your players still get the experience. They get the experience of a tournament atmosphere and they just steal the show. They just absolutely steal the show, you know? So, and, and also if, if lastly, I could say if there's a conference that, you know, you you really want to say, hey, look at us. It is it is absolutely the Big East. It is absolutely the Big East. There, I mean, the, even even the teams that didn't have the best records still show potential. You know, in football, it's the SEC that kind of controls everything in football. But in basketball, I would say it's it's the Big East. Years ago, it was the ACC. ACC is probably looking at the Big East like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're, 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 we're a great conference too. I agree with you. But if you want to talk about a conference that says, hey, put us on TV all the time, it is the Big East. It yep, is the I, Big East. Yep, I do agree. I agree. Cre um, Creighton, um, Gonzaga, they have come a long way. When I first uh, heard about Gonzaga, I just, go back to John Stockton. It has come a long way from John Stockton era to now. And um and that's one of those teams that I want to see them, you know, you know, finally get over the hump. So we will have to wait and see um for next season uh, what happens there. But um Avery, thank you once again. Um year two has been sensational talking March Madness. And um I mean, it's it's always a ball. It's always a ball to to do this um around this time. So, uh, uh, college basketball March, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Not even the NBA can top that. No, yeah, I I, I agree with you. We've talked about this, you know, uh, in in the couple of years we've known each other. There is something about college sports that when you see the excitement of the players, you just can't help but feel excited as well and March Madness the college basketball tournament men's and women's tournament you always get those surprises you always are are looking to see those upsets you're always looking to see you know what players are going to make an impact what players are going to stand out you know that they can you know cement their legacy if you will during March and as much as you know you worry about weather and and allergies and hay fever a good thing to look forward to in march is college basketball and it's fantastic <laughs>